The average human has approximately 60,000 thoughts per day. Of these, 75% are negative and 95% are repetitive. You can see how it can become difficult to break free and generate original ideas. The challenging part about ideas, from my experience at least, is that the best ones are not consciously generated. They come to us like fish in a pond. Our brains are not wired to generate thoughts. They're conditioned to respond to and process thoughts that come to us. Well, wait a minute. Ideas are just thoughts, right? So in essence, we can't really generate ideas until they come to us, right? Well, ideas are a little bit different. There is a process that you can take to actually generate an idea. It's a little bit clunky at first, but when you try it, it actually sort of works. This is a process that I am recommending to any writer, whether you are a screenwriter, a playwright, an author. Obviously, I'm more focused on screenwriting and filmmaking, but this can apply to anybody who writes creatively. So let me give you some foundation to build off of. Let me give you some tips that will help you generate ideas when you just feel stuck. The first part of this is character. When you have a fully rounded character who wants something really badly, you have a film, you have a story, you have a book, you have a play. Starting with character is a great way to generate ideas that will serve a purpose in your storytelling. Dramatic storytelling requires us to capture the essence of the human experience and amplify it. That is shown in its most actual form when dealing with characters. If you need an idea for a film, start by building a character, but not just any character, a character who is militant, a character who wants something more than they want to breathe. Take a second to pause and think. Try to recognize people in your life who have unique personalities. I bet there's somebody who came to mind already. Let's just say this person is an abusive person. We'll start there. Take that person and make a character out of them. Write an outline describing what they're like. You can even describe what they look like. Now amplify their personality. Show what it feels like to be around an abusive person. Then challenge their abusive behavior with real life obstacles. An abusive person is short-sighted and narrow-minded. As the storyteller, force them to experience a situation where they have no choice but to zoom out and realize everything they have done and everybody they have hurt. Exaggeration is a necessity when building characters. It's the only way they can reveal their true colors to the audience. Now with that said, you can take exaggeration overboard. That's usually what causes melodramatic stories and usually what amateur filmmakers fall into. You don't want it to be a situation where like you have to show every little piece of what an abusive person looks like. It's just like anything in storytelling, you want it to unfold naturally. So in order to show what an abusive person looks like, you want to start small, but have it build up slowly. Let's look at another example. In your mind, what would a generous person look like? And remember, the only thing the audience can see is what you show them. From my experience, a generous person is willing to give things that others may not, whether that's time, energy, money, effort, whatever it might be. Well, when you, as the storyteller, decide to force this generous person into a situation where they have to sacrifice more than they are prepared to for someone else or for some bigger cause, that creates conflict we as the audience are now invested and need to know what decision they will make. Again, look at the people in your life. Do you know anyone who's dishonest, arrogant, ill-tempered, or on the other side, maybe passionate, kind, very understanding? There is a story to be written about every single one of those people. It requires amplifying reality to a degree, creating a vital goal for the main character, and implementing obstacles that shake the core of their personalities. Usually your best bet is to create a situation where the two or more characters you have in your story are complete opposites from each other because it's a very good way to create conflict. You could say this is a pathway into quick, microwavable conflict. 
maybe the generous person meets the abusive person. Could work. Okay, so now we've talked about character. The next part of this is premise. A premise can be defined as a proposition antecedently supposed or proved, a basis of argument, a proposition stated or assumed as leading to a conclusion. In other words, it's what the author is trying to prove. As the writer, director, or both, you are the author of the film. This idea of premise goes by many different names. Some people call this theme, thesis, central idea, driving force, whatever term you want to assign to it, it doesn't really matter in the end of the day. So Lajos Egri, the author of this book right here, The Art of Dramatic Writing, he refers to it as premise, and I tend to follow that too. Every character you write must serve this premise in some way. So this is the way Egri formats his premises. Idea A leads to idea B. It is always one sentence. Egri's most common example of this is the play Romeo and Juliet, which obviously deals with great love. Undoubtedly, their love for each other is so great that they are willing to defy family tradition and even die to be together. So then Egri determines the premise, great love defies even death. That premise, in one sentence, gives us the beginning, middle, and end of the play. The play begins with great love. Defies refers to the conflict in the middle of the play. Death is the resolution. Let's look at another example. Take a look at Breaking Bad. And spoiler alert if you've never watched it. What do we know about this series? Walter White is ambitious. He wants to be revered, respected, and even feared. He wants power, and absolute power. He is willing to lie, steal, and kill for it. Clearly, his ambition is ruthless. Once he gets the power he seeks, it begins to slowly crumble in front of him, leading to his inevitable death. The premise, then, must be ruthless ambition ends in destruction. Ruthless ambition is the beginning of the show. Ends in is the conflict. Destruction is the resolution. Build, establish, resolve. That is the bone structure of any grand narrative. Go look at any film, any TV show that you really like. I promise you, if you just look for the premise, you watch the entire thing all the way through, and you're just thinking about the premise, once you finish, you'll be able to notice this pattern. It's in everything you watch. And this premise is not just something that you kind of believe or that you think you believe. The premise you formulate must be a firm conviction that you have about any pressing topic. It can be about anything. As long as you have a firm conviction of it and you believe in it 120%. It's just one sentence and you have to be absolutely certain about that one sentence. And sometimes it takes a lot of refining just to get there. Sometimes you just know what it is right away. The characters you build must serve this premise. Let's look at Romeo and Juliet. Romeo is a passionate, unwavering lover. The premise is great love defies even death. That makes him perfect for a premise like that. In Breaking Bad, ruthless ambition ends in destruction. That's the premise. Walter is a ruthless, power-hungry individual. The only ending for someone like Walter White is destruction. Once you have a premise and a character to prove it, you have a story to write. You can generate endless ideas from those two principles alone, and those ideas will be much more meaningful than if you were to start from plot. Starting from plot opens a gateway to superficial stories. Starting from character and premise leads you down a path where meaningful stories are brewed. Those are the only two things you need to get an idea out of your brain and onto the page. However, if you follow those two principles of character and premise, and you still don't know where to go, here's where you can start. The point of attack. This is another principle that Egri teaches in his book. It means to start the story right at the point in which a major change or pivotal moment occurs in the main character's life. In Breaking Bad, the story begins, or truly begins, once Walter White is diagnosed with stage three lung cancer. Romeo and Juliet begins with Romeo having run away from home 
because the love of his life at the time, Rosaline, does not love him back. The point of attack is a starting point to turn your newly found character and premise into a narrative. Now, I just want to make something clear because in his book, Egri says that you have to start from premise and then go to character. I personally prefer to start from character and go into premise because character is a good way for me to generate ideas, but there's no wrong way to do it. You can start from premise if you'd like. But with point of attack, you immediately have a conflict to test the will of your protagonist. This is especially helpful when writing short films. If you are someone who struggles to write shorter stories, I highly recommend this method because it gives you a conflict to start with right away without having to set up anything big. So, you got the two principles of character and premise. And then, you got the point of attack. Ultimately, the purpose of this video was to solve a problem that many artists, myself included, encounter daily. The truth is, we don't always have great ideas. And some of us just don't have the time to wait for a good idea to pop up. However, the principles of character and premise can be used to generate an idea for a story. These principles can be embedded into any plot, whether it's a movie about a zombie apocalypse or maybe it's a film about a track star competing for a gold medal or something. You know, it just, you can apply these principles to anything. Use these principles of character and premise, then use the method of point of attack to knock out like two to three pages in less than 30 minutes. And lastly, and I know this is easier said than done, but just don't overthink it. it doesn't help. <laughs> well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe, like, comment down below what you thought. And yeah, any support you give, I greatly appreciate it, even if it's just a little bit. Have a great day.